the main task for all the crew members on board is executing the hundreds of science experiments taking place at any time during their expeditions. Uh, the space station uh, testing ground for a number of technologies that are going to make future missions beyond low Earth orbit possible, giving us the chance to test everything from life support systems to delays in communication, uh, even ways to grow food for the crews to eat. Uh, one of those experiments on board right now is a compact greenhouse known as Veggie, uh, which so far has grown lettuce and flowers is, and is going to be getting more seeds on the next SpaceX Dragon mission targeted to launch uh, next month. Recently, my colleague Brandy Dean talked with uh, Dr. Joya Massa, the Veggie Project scientist, about the experiment and why it's important to have a compact greenhouse for future space missions. Well, Veggie is really a test bed for future life support technologies. You know, we're learning how to grow food for the astronauts um, as they're away from Earth longer, you know, longer durations. And so right now we're, we're, we're using Veggie to start to figure out the best ways to grow different types of crops. And um, we'd like to be able to use it to give them supplemental salads on space station. You know, they don't get regular supplies of produce. Um, so one of the things that we often hear from the crew is that they really want more fresh vegetables. So that um, is, is kind of our near-term goal. And, and as we learn more about growing these types of crops, we'll be able to develop um, more continuous types of production. The other big aspect, I think, you know, for, for nutrition, for crew health, you know, a lot of the, the foods may not store well for really long durations, or um, there might be some nutrients that the, that the package diet's a little low in. So having this additional fresh available um, nutrition for them could be really important as they're you know, gone longer from Earth. Um, and I think also the psychological benefit of having something green and growing when they're living and working in an extreme environment can be very important. So we're using this, you know, it's a very small system for now, um, but we're using it as a test bed to, to develop larger systems um, as we develop our plans for the journey to Mars. Those all sound like good reasons, and I know you have already a couple of crops under your belt. Uh, I think you used some of your lessons learned from the first uh, harvest of lettuce to to put into the second harvest, and then you um, grew flowers on the next on the next round. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what the what the appeal of flowers were? Well, so we selected the zinnia flowers as a test crop. And we actually weren't sure when we would get the approval for the crew to, to eat the lettuce. And we didn't quite know when we were planning all this, you know, at, at what order would they, would they be able to, you know, grow the second batch of lettuce right away. We didn't want them to do that if we hadn't gotten um, the data back from the first set so we could get the food safety analysis performed to, to have the crew able to eat them. So instead, we sent flowers that weren't really something that they'd like to eat, but that were something that will, will give us a lot of information and something we, we hoped that they would enjoy to grow. And they actually seemed to enjoy them. Um, we also wanted to test a longer duration crop in veggie. And so the flowers actually take twice as long or more than lettuce. We ended up growing this set of flowers for 90 days up there. Wow. So this was a, a, a long duration test and it gave us a lot of information about long duration crops. And flowering is really important for fruiting crops such as tomato, which we hope to grow in the next couple of years because you have to have flowers before you can produce fruit. And so flowering is a little harder in plants. Um, you know, it takes a little more strict environmental conditions than just producing leaves. So we really needed to see if veggie and the environment on the International Space Station were capable of producing everything that the plants needed for producing flowers. Wow. I know I get excited about fresh tomatoes here on the ground, so I'm sure they would on the space station. Oh, yeah. I think that But I guess um, I know you had a few setbacks even with the zinnias. So can you tell us what you learned from that and how you eventually got them on track and growing? Well, um, it was really Scott Kelly. He did all the, the legwork for getting the zinnias on track and growing. He did a wonderful job. Um, so, so one of the, the issues that we've been having with veggie is getting sufficient water to the plants. You know, plant roots need both water and oxygen. And that's really tricky in microgravity where water tends to kind of form a ball and then the air um, may or may not, you know, mix well with, with the water. And so 
trying to get the right balance of water and air in the root zone has been kind of a challenge. Um, so with the lettuce, um, we had the crew water the, the plants and we kind of knew the growth rate of lettuce and knew the amount of water to apply. Uh, with the zinnias, they were growing a little more slowly than we expected. And so they didn't use as much water as we thought that they would. Um, so there was actually too much water building up in the compartment, and this led to some fungal growth on some of the plants that were in there and, and some, some, some responses of, of some of the plants. You know, they, they just were not happy. And so Scott noticed this. He let us know. Um, you know, we came up with some strategies that he could use, including turning the fans on to higher um, and, you know, obviously cutting back on the amount of water. And he took over the role of an autonomous gardener. Um, so this was a really big deal because this was something that the veggie team had wanted to get to the point where the crew could, could do all of the gardening kind of on their own and just ask us for advice. They're the ones who are seeing the plants and growing the plant. Um, but, you know, the way things are conducted on the space station, it was a little challenging to, um, to implement that because, you know, we have to have procedures for everything. So when, when Scott had asked, you know, let me figure out how to deal with this, we were delighted because that was really what we wanted to be able to do. And, and he did a wonderful job. He managed to, um, you know, save a couple of the plants that, that were having some issues and they grew and they flowered really well. And we had, um, you know, we're bringing back samples of some of the fungus that grew on some of the other plants. So we'll be able to figure out really what that was and, and figure out how to prevent it in the future. You mentioned that you'll be getting a look back at, at some of the some of the plants. When, when do you expect to receive them? I, I know that, that takes a while sometimes to get things back from the space station. So the second set of lettuce that they grew, they, they ate some of it, but they also saved some of that for science. And we had um, swabs as well to look at microbiology and, and some plant pillow samples. And those are coming back on the next SpaceX flight when it returns, SpaceX 8. And also our zinnia uh, fungal samples will be coming back on that flight, as well as some of the flowers from the zinnia experiment. So we had um, Scott save some of these flowers, and we're going to look to see if seeds have developed and if those seeds are viable. So those are all coming back when the next SpaceX flight returns. Um, and then we'll have the rest of the zinnia plant samples and plant pillows coming back on SpaceX 9 when that one returns. Okay. And you're also sending um, some new seeds up on, on SpaceX. So can you tell us what, what to expect next? Yes. Yeah, so we're really excited. Um, the next set of seeds we're sending, we're sending some more of the red romaine lettuce because the crew obviously enjoyed growing and e eating that. But we're also sending um, a small Chinese cabbage, the variety is called Tokyo Bacana. And it's a, it's a really delicious um, Chinese cabbage. It grows really fast and it's, you know, eaten raw in salads. And we actually selected this variety. We did a whole series of tests with a number of different leafy green crops. And we looked at the growth um, of these in plant pillows. We looked at the, um, the nutrition of the actual crops. And then we looked at the um, organoleptic which um, factors, which is basically the taste tests. So we, we grew them and we sent produce to Johnson Space Center where they have a food lab. And in the food lab, they actually conducted taste tests. So a number of people got to taste the different varieties that we sent. And this one was the highest rated. So everyone loved it in terms of flavor and texture. And um, it was just really, really highly approved. So because of that, we, we moved forward to send this crop as the next crop that we're flying to see if the crew likes it as much as everyone else did.